Hello, Failchaw. Come on in, you must be Peter. And you must be Craig. What is Failchaw? That is, hello, in Gaelic. I studied it for two years in the University of Galway. Oh, why did I ever come back? You studied Gaelic. Why? For my identity. College is all about finding out who you are. I am a Celt, and, as you know, a Druid. Not just a reformed Druid, I'm a Druid. Therefore, I needed to study a Celtic language, so I did. And it has made all the difference. Yes, Andrea mentioned that you and Dan knew a lot about the ancient Celts and the Druids. Well, I do. But, I am afraid Dan has only dabbled for a year or so with some background reading. My next goal will be learning Welsh in a master's program in Cardiff after I graduate next spring. I can't wait. So, you're learning a bit about Reformed Druidism? Yes, I've talked a bit with Sarah and Andrea already. Ah yes. So you got their spiel about freedom, religious liberty, anti-authoritarianism. It sounds like you are not interested in that. Everyone comes to reform Druidism with different motivations, you know. Some noble, others far less so. And some for mysterious reasons of fate. Of course, and I am looking forward to meeting everyone. But, what about the excitement? The magic? The poetry? Did they tell you how fun the festivals are? The mystery and grandeur of the Druidic traditions? The subtle bittersweet wisdom of the Celtic Gestalt. And the campfires. It's not just about rebellion and independence and all that. Well, no, I guess not. All in good time. Peter, even for such a simple group? There's much to learn. Our Jack Pine Grove is a college-based group, one of only three in the Reform. As such, it is rather an intense and short-lived experience. We'll all leave within four or five years. So, make the most of it. Druidic go brack. Carpe diem. Carpe diem. Like in the movie, Dead Poets Society. Ideally. But, our Jack Pine Grove is often more like, the island of the misfit toys, as you'll see soon. But first, I must challenge you to a duel. A what? A duel. Don't worry, it'll be a battle of wits, and I'll hold back on my sharpest sarcasm. On guard. Why? What did I do? I must battle you for the right to seek Sarah's favors. Sarah. Sarah, how are you today? Fine, Andrea. How are things? Oh, not so well, but still holding together, as always. My husband, Ishan, will be returning from the business trip tomorrow, so I'm doing double duty at home. Oh, and Peter stopped in last week. Yes, he's a nice fellow. Please, don't tell me, you didn't send him to Craig, did you? Afraid so, had to happen eventually. I think he can handle him. How'd it go with Peter last week? Seems interested. A gentle soul. He reminds me of a young knight on a quest, so polite. And kind of cute too, don't you think? Oh, Andrea. I've still got eyes and I can see. Oh, come on. When are you going to live a little? If not him, well then who? When? It's been almost four years now. It's complicated. Yes, of course it is. And it won't get any more simple after school. I have other priorities right now. This is my senior year, and I need to prepare for my MBA and then find an internship in Chicago next summer. 
I want to be successful. I don't want to end up like... Like what? Like me. I didn't mean that. Yes, you did. In a loveless marriage. A dead-end job. Stuck here in rural Michigan. It doesn't always end this way. But sure, there is a risk, and there is a silver lining to every cloud. Like my kids. But college is a time to explore. Sarah, you are 21. You don't have to marry the first man who comes along. I wish someone had told me that. If love walks in my door, I can go along with that. But I'm not going to force it to start now. It takes time to rebuild. Peter is just a friend. Okay, he's a friend, but keep the door open, all right. Don't shut everyone out. Thanks. But while we are talking empowerment, what are you going to say to Ishan when he comes back? Well... Sarah, you must be mistaken. We're not, really. Well, good. Then, I take back my challenge. I will spare you. Um, thanks Craig. You know, I return from the gates of paradise for her. How long I have worshipped her, bathed from afar in the glorious sunbeams from my auburn angel. Now, I am wasting away. Yes, pining away. Ah, the irony. Here on Jack Pine Grove. Why don't you just tell her? You know nothing. The timing is not yet ripe. I await the moment, when she will be ready, when fate and the gods decide that we must embark on an epic courtship. And then I will woo her. Like Tristan, like Dermaid, like Lancelot. Woo? Who? Like the great lovers from Celtic mythology. So often it ends in tragic, unrequited, star-crossed love. Yet, we Celts are never happier than when we are sad. It's our nature, one must love passionately, or not at all. Don't mention this to Sarah. But we are both seniors this fall, and it must be soon, or never. Never? How cruel a word? Oh, my heart. Is it ready yet? Mum's the word. I wish you luck on that. So, tell me about the Celts and Druidic symbols. Oh, where to begin? We only have two months of summer vacation left. Alas, I'm not certain I am ready to take you on as my student. Your student. Okay, don't pressure me, I accept. But... Now. The first thing we need is background, background, and more background. Wait a moment. Here, this is a list of some books you must read before we can even talk of the basics. So many? Isn't it wonderful? Let's start with just these three, a very Celtic number, and go from there. Come back in a week. Okay, if you say so. I do say so. Yes, go, the books are waiting for you in the library. Slain Liat. Huh? That means goodbye, or health go with you. Oh, Slain Liat. No, no. Since you are the one leaving, you say, Slain Agat. Or health stay with me. Um, right. Slinagat. Oh, and don't forget to check the footnotes.